Is this an interesting story about an interesting man? Today we're talking the wonderful story of Henry Sugar. Is it a wonderful story? Or is it not? What's up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. It's my channel. No, it's not. Today we're talking the brand new Wes Anderson movie on Netflix, but this is more of a short film. It only clocks in around 40-something minutes, so it's short. That's what she said! So a rich man learns about a guru who can see without using his eyes. He sets out to master the skill in order to cheat at gambling. That's smart. This is adapted from Roald Dahl's long short story, so I think that marriage between the two is actually quite beautiful, and it is rated PG. So it's a story for the entire family? Kind of? I don't know if the kids would enjoy this, but you watch this film, this very short story. I lied, it's not 40-something minutes, it's 39. So. Oh shit, I'm sorry. And it absolutely flies by. It's so obvious to say something like, oh, the pacing's really good in a 40-minute movie, but it is. And I think the decision to make this a short film is the best decision because you don't want to try to do too much with a story that doesn't have too much to it. And that is in no way a knock on this tale. This is a very interesting tale that I have never even heard of before, so I did not know what was coming. I didn't know the storytelling technique, what that would be. That's interesting. You get numerous perspectives on this story, so you basically have our character telling the story of a story of someone who reads a story about a story. And while there are numerous characters here, there is a very small cast, and a lot of the cast members play multiple characters in this film, and that includes Benedict Cumberbatch, Rafe Fiennes, Ben Kingsley, Dev Patel, and a few more in there, but those four, they are the core four. And what I love about the decision to do that is that each actor gets an opportunity to do something different in almost every single scene. Now, Cumberbatch obviously has the most to do, not at the beginning of the story because it takes a while to get to his part, but he plays numerous characters and there is one scene where he's walking in and out of frame in different outfits and different costumes as different people and I'm just like, the range on this guy is ridiculous and that pairing, that Wes Anderson, Benedict Cumberbatch pairing, I wanna see more of that going forward. We know how Anderson likes to pair himself up with numerous actors I think that Cumberbatch pairing is going to work really well in the future, and I want to see it uh, in a long-form film. That being said, again, I come back to the point that I made at the beginning. The idea to make this a short movie was a great call by everyone involved because there's just not much more you could have done to flesh out these stories or these characters. It's such a simple story to tell, but it's one that's quirky enough to where it's going to work so beautifully with Wes Anderson's skill set. And that skill set includes, obviously, the framing, the way that the camera captures the moment all throughout this film or moments and the style of this one specifically. Now we know that Wes Anderson likes to utilize that play theater type of storytelling style within his filmography, and he's done that in the past. I feel like this is the most he has ever committed to that. This was like watching a play in real time, and I think I've said that before about, no, no, this is the ultimate example. You have shifting and changing sets, going in and out of location in a way to where it looks like it's being captured on a stage. And we just saw, you know, similar moments in Asteroid City, which came out earlier this year, like one half of that story. But I thought it was captured much better here. And they utilized that the entirety of the movie and the storytelling technique, I think, enhances that. Uh, but you also look at the visuals and we understand his eye. We understand the framing and the, the idea of putting everything in the center and uh, blah 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 it's Wes Anderson we've seen it before he does it again in this movie but I will say there's a little something extra say what spicing it up a little bit there's a little something extra in this movie to where he will shift a character to one side of the frame or the other and oftentimes just completely change the aspect ratio of that moment. And it doesn't happen as often as maybe I made it sound like but when it does happen I'm like okay that's distinct that's different, and I think it works well for the scene that they are trying to give us during the sequence. So it's almost like this was Anderson's opportunity to one, commit harder than he ever has to this style of storytelling, but two, experiment with different framing techniques every so often throughout this short story to where it does kind of make a difference. Now, my one big issue with this movie is the fact that I could not quite connect with it as much as I wanted to. Oh, good for you! And I come back to the idea that if you're not a Wes Anderson fan and you're watching this, 
you will probably not enjoy this experience because it's the most Wes Anderson we have seen in a while. Now, I don't think that's a bad thing, but I do think it was a little much at times. And there are also certain character decisions. I think of one of Dev Patel's characters in this film, and when he is recounting information and saying his lines, he'll add in, he said, and he mentioned, and tell the story from that perspective, even though he is the one talking to where if the movie would have went on any longer, I think that would have started to just kind of almost overstay its welcome. I can't say I loved that decision, but I can say it's authentic and it did work for the story that they told here. So really, I don't have any major issues. It's a really tightly told story in a movie that was entertaining enough, but it is one that I watch and it doesn't quite have that impact Anderson's looking for. He wants to make me sit back and go, wow, that was so quirky and zany and different and authentic and it is in a way, but not in a way to where I'm going to remember the experience as a whole weeks down the road. It's a movie that is very well made. It's solid quality. I think it's a good Wes Anderson outing. Hey, that's pretty good. Before giving my score, what's the better Wes Anderson movie this year? Asteroid City or Henry Sugar? Leave those comments down below. And if you want to drop a like on this video, man, that would help the channel so much. And thank you for being here. Anderson's decision making is on point here as the story is told without much filler. Not one moment feels unnecessary. Every sequence and character serve a purpose and the production design is outstanding. The story and the execution at points is not going to stick with me as much as his other films have, but it works for what it's trying to do, and it's a very easy watch on Netflix. And it's PG, so let your whole family watch and see what they think about it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll be back uh, maybe later on today with another review.